Hello everyone. Today in this video, we are going to learn about how soil management was done during the time of ancient era, middle era, and pre-independence era. If we see the farmers in ancient India were quite conscious of the nature of soil and its relation to production of specific crops of economic importance. The farmers also passed on their vast knowledge which they acquired by experience from one generation to another generation. They also incorporated their observation into a number of Vedic texts which were compiled between the period of 1000 BC to 600 BC. Now let's study the soil management in ancient era. In Vedic age, a land was classified as Urvara, that is cultivable land, Khila, that is barren land, Dhanva, that is wasteland, and Aranya, that is forest. So in Amarokosha, land has been grouped according to fertility, physical composition, and situation which will be discussed further. Now, before going further, if you are wondering what is Amarokosha, so let me tell you, it is derived from Sanskrit word Amara, which means immortal, and Kosha, which means uh, treasure, casket, pell, collection, or dictionary. Now let's see under Amarokosha how land has been grouped. As I have said earlier, it was grouped according to fertility, physical composition, and situations as 12 land types. So these 12 land types I will be showing in a picture in which you can see again Kashyapa classified the arable lands into two categories. Here the word Arable land means the land which is uh, capable of plowing and being cultivated. So that is known as arable lands. So the arable lands were classified as dry land requiring water for cultivation and wetland requiring less water for cultivation. The value of manures in cultivation was appreciated in India from Rigveda. In addition to bones, fish, fish washing and animal and vegetable products. The manure they used consisted of excreta of animals mixed with litter. Earliest reference of manuring the soil can be traced to Atharva Veda 1500 to 500 BC. But elaborate instructions are given in Bhrat Samhita 500 AD Agni Purana there is a um, 500 to 700 AD Krishi Sangraha of Parasara 500 to 1000 AD Upavana Vinodha 1300 AD contains elaborate details of manuring of plants some example are number one the wine would bend under the weight of its flower and fruits if its roots are manured with the powdered ordure of cocks and nourished with the broth of the flesh of fish. So this was the example number one. And now number two is the second example is the arecana tree would give rich fruit if every year its basin is filled with ordure in the rains in the rainy season. Here, ordure means the excrement or dung. Now let's move to the soil management in middle era. The natural fertility of Indian soils has been the one common feature noticed by almost all foreign travelers to India prior to 20th century, 1200 to 1889. There was an abundant supply of cattle manure which the farmer knew as a material for organic enrichment of soils. The dung was used for garden cultivation and crop fields and a large portion of it was used as a fuel. 
there is little evidence of the deliberate use of bones of animals as manure but the use of fish and manure was prevalent in some coastal states Persian manuscripts on agriculture contains references on dropping of birds and animals stools as manure especially for garden crops use of green leaves as manure was common practice as per the writings of Francis Buchanan now let's move on to the last era of this video there is the pre-independence era in 1889 dr. JV Volsker consultant chemist to the Royal Agricultural Society was invited to advise upon the best course to be adopted in order to apply agricultural chemistry to improve Indian agriculture so dr. Volsker advised the appointment of agricultural chemists so the appointment of dr j w luther in 1892 marked the beginning of research in agricultural chemistry and soil science the first permanent manorial experiment was established at kanpur in 1885 based on the rothamsted model two more experiments were laid out at pusa and coimbatore the experimental results showed that crop yields would be improved remarkably with the balanced NPK fertilizers. The Royal Commission on Agriculture 1929 appointed in India in 1926 suggested efforts to improve the management and productivity of Indian soils. Some of the significant recommendations of the commission which had an impact on soil management strategies in the country which are shown here in the photo you can pause the video and have a glance on it the commission observed that red soils as a rule were deficient in nitrogen and phosphorus and humus but potassium and calcium were generally sufficient the black soils of peninsular India were also considered deficient in phosphorus nitrogen and organic matter but potassium and calcium were not deficient during 1930s three permanent manure trials were set up Julander in Punjab in 1934 Sahajanpur UP 1935 and Padgaon Maharashtra in 1935 as a sequel to the permanent manure experiment established at Kanpur results indicated importance of fertilizer manure and crop rotation in maintaining productivity and fertility of the soils so this was all about the soil management done in ancient India uh, sorry in ancient medieval and pre-modern India Thank you.